All right, we are here on a beautiful winter day here in Naramata um, with owner of Tightrope Winery, Graham O'Rourke. We are currently in the Barbera block and we are going to learn all about pruning. Um, as you can see, Graham is behind me hand pruning some of these Barbera vines. Barbera is a grape not commonly grown here in the Okanagan, um, typically known um, in northern Italy, where it produces wines of low tannin, high acid, um, and you blend this into your rosé, don't you, Graham? Yeah, we have two wines that we put the Barbera into. One is the rosé, and again, it's to lift the acid, give the wine a finish. And then it goes into our red blend, uh, which is called Vertigo, which is Merlot, Barbera, and Cab Franc. That fruit hangs a little bit longer, but the idea is the same thing, is to lift the structure of the Merlot up and to give the wine a finish. Yep. So Graham, can you tell me a little about the decisions you've made um, with pruning these vines? Um, these are planted in 2007 when you bought the property. Um, and yeah, why have you decided to cane versus spur prune? I like uh, cane pruning because I find it, I get a, a perfect shoot positioning along the, along the fruiting wire. I like the renewal of wood on a yearly basis. I don't like cordons because there's too many pits and crevices and areas where powdery mildew or botrytis spores or overwintering insects can, can spend the dormant season. Uh, so yeah, there's the shoot thinning, there's the balance and the positioning of the fruit zone as well is another, is another reason why I cane prune. Um, yeah, you'd mentioned that um, Barbera is a naturally very vigorous um, grape to grow. Cane pruning also enables you to kind of control that vigor as well in a sense. For sure. It's, I mean, the, the soil is not that vigorous. The vine is quite vigorous. Um, if I was to do it over again, I might put them a little farther apart. but. Yeah, I find the cane pruning is just, it's better for the shoot positioning than controlling the vigor. In this case, it's on a riparia rootstock, which again will help me control the vigor. Uh, but yeah, it is one of these varieties that likes to grow and grow and grow and stay vegetative. And because I do drop a lot of the crop uh, the end of June and early July, it, it does trigger it to stay vegetative a little bit. Great. Well, follow us along um, while we do some cane pruning here at Tightrope. We're going to prune some vines. Chad is actively pruning one of his Barbera vines. Um, and the goal here is to really bring the canes back to the center. If you follow me this way, you can see here that he has taken all the extras out and left the two replacements and the one spur. This is going to have um, basically an insurance for the following season. And these will inevitably get laid down on this VSP trellising system and produce the 2021 vintage. of leaving a minimum of four canes per vine as like insurance due to recent frost scares. Right. Are you afraid of that? Yeah, so we spend, so if we back up to 2020, we spent our whole season trying to grow a healthy vine so that when it was time to shut down for the winter, there was a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of starch, a lot of energy in the leaves and they get pulled back into the roots and the trunk and the canes. Yeah. So we spend our whole season trying to create a healthy vine. And then what happens is we come along and we prune it and we cut it and we create a wound that I want to callus over yep. before the spring, before the sap flow, because I don't want to waste all that Harness good energy. nutrient out 
out the end. So like when you okay. people, when people cut while they're tying, all that sap, all that very valuable nutrient goes out and falls on the ground. Huh. And what you don't realize, I guess, is that the first five to six centimeters of growth is actually from that sap. That's what has allowed that vine to get a great start in the season. And if I just let that push out on the ground, I've lost all that. When I lose the, sh the nutrients out the end, it's, it's, my roots haven't quite been able to pull from the soil yet because they're still kind of cold. Huh. So yeah, cutting while you're tying and when the weather's warm, sometimes you can't avoid it. Sometimes, you know, it's a nice day, the sap flows. But we want that wound to callus over, to plug all that very valuable nutrients into the wood. And I know it's not something that... And you're not afraid of like winter dieback. So if we not have another frost, well, hopefully not, we just had minus 20. Right. But if this does freeze, right. are you not worried about it killing that bud? Well, for sure, but I'm more worried about killing the phloem between the buds because the, the phloem is actually less hardy than the buds. These buds yeah. can handle... Quite a bit. Right now, I think the research station is saying we're around minus 21, 22 yeah. for bud death. Phloem is probably sitting around minus 16. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, phloem re heals itself, but tell that to bud breaker. Like it doesn't, vines die inwards, but the severity of it is hard to predict because there's so many factors. Temperature, yes, but it's also time at temperature. Minus 21 for five minutes, how, how much damage is that going to do? Or is minus 18 for five hours going to do the same amount of damage? So gotcha. it's time temperature. Time I believe. And that's what I... That's what I now, like I said, foam does repair itself over the course of the spring, but it needs the turgor pressure and the warmth and the water and the nutrients to make that happen. It doesn't happen right away. So bud break will always be very variable after a hard wind. Bounce back better than some of the other varieties, like the Pinot Gris, if you go through there, there's a lot of new trunks. Okay. But yeah, the I mean... Barbera, whether it's the strength of the rootstock or the strength of the actual vine or just the spot it's in, a lot of them bounce back better than other years. So, so you don't actually have to use your replacement? I don't have to replace, use okay. a replacement trunk in this scenario. So I can go back to the crown, depending on where they're all from. I can just go back and find replacement coming out of the thing is you can fix almost anything. And, it'll take and at the end of the day, if you make the wrong cut, you can fix it next year. You can always <laughs> fix it next year. Yeah, vines are, once vines hit, they're sort of Second year, third year, it's really hard to kill. They'll always bounce back. These tendrils are pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Barbera. I learned a lot about it after a few years of being in the ground. There's a lot of things it doesn't like. It doesn't like heat stress. It doesn't like wet feet. It doesn't like high calcium content in soils, which is exactly what we have here. Yeah. <laughs> But we like the wine, we like what it does as a blender, never do a single varietal, I would imagine. Do you have enough crop to do a single if you wanted to? Oh yeah, we have about a third of an acre here, so we could, we could probably do about 75 cases if we wanted to do a single varietal, but cool. like Barbera, it, it handles the sugar. It gets the sugar no problem, it gets the color no problem, but it does not respire the, the acid out. It's not hot enough at night, I guess, around here for that yep. to happen. So picture for you wine snobs, picture, <laughs> maybe that was too aggressive. For you wine makers, <laughs> picture like 25 bricks. Which is a point, sugar. Yeah, or more mm -hmm. even up to 26 bricks. Okay. 3.1 pH and about a 13 acid, so. Wow makes it kind of tough to make that a single varietal unless you want to let it sit for 10 to 12 years in bottle to age. Yeah. So again, back to our other point, this is why we use it in rosé. It, it helps lift the acidity, helps when you do the dry uh, Pinot Noir base rosé, it helps give it a finish. Around here, because Merlot tends to drop in acid under five and a half, under six you can use the the vertigo and the barbera the barbera in the vertigo to to bring a balance back to the to the wine huh. the blender 100 percent
Love it. Would I plant it again? And that's where you cut. <laughs>